do a quick review if we can. Okay? Care fronting is caring enough to confront. The goal of care fronting is what? Seeking to understand. Seeking to understand. Okay? To understand each other. Okay? And it's also to strengthen the relationship and to reconcile broken relationships. Okay? So that's a purpose by seeking to understand. Now, here's the challenge. Who's going to do that first? <coughs> Who is it that can deal with their emotions and zip their lip long enough to hear and care what somebody has to say. Especially when you're the one that brought up the stuff. So the key to care fronting is being willing to set aside your thoughts, feelings, and all this stuff and seek to understand their point of view. Isn't that exciting? The question is, do you want relationships bad enough? Do you want to understand bad enough to actually do that? Hold it. It's, nothing's going to guarantee you it's going to work both ways, ever. Listen, no situation can destroy you. Only how you choose to respond to it can. So, one of the, the first decoration on that paper that I hand out this morning is what? By the way, what does it say? Ooh, what does it say? I'm never going to deal with them based on how they're dealing with me. So I'm going to do what's right, regardless of what the other person does. Yes. <laughs> My thing is, though, it will be, be, are we willing to do what it costs us to help reconcile or develop the relationship? I, I, I'm listen, milk is for babes. This is not milk. This is meat. Okay? And it's for those who have exercised themselves. Listen, we have to exercise ourselves in the small little things. Because Paul said, listen, you should be ready to eat meat, but you aren't. Because you haven't exercised the milk. And so we've got to start with the tiny little things and progressively get to the point where I can say, Will you deal with this right, even if the other person may not respond right? Amen. And listen, if you have somebody you've offended, and you go to them and say, I realize you're offended, and I want to understand what happened and, and, and hear you, do you, will they tell you? Sometimes. They'll generally tell you without you asking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> not in a very nice way. Yes. And if they don't tell you, be believe me, what's going to happen? They're going to tell everybody else. All right. And might I say to you, you're going to do one of the two. <laughs> you're going to do one of the two. Either you're going to go deal with, it with them, or you're going to go around telling everybody else what they did to you and how wrong they were and how unkind of, and inconsiderate and, and all the other stuff. Well, eventually you've got to deal with that person. End of issue. Eventually, you've got to face that person. Okay? So, you have to, okay, you have to make some of these declarations and act them out. Okay? So, by the way, I, 
I'm giving Pat a hard time only because she's saying the truth of our responses. Yeah, that's that's our natural response to want to be heard and understood, and 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 it is. It's great when you have people that understand you and and all that, and you can work together. But by the way, that doesn't happen without applying it. And so somebody's got to initiate it. And my question is, are you willing to initiate it? And set aside your opinions, your feelings, your thoughts, your, your understanding, and say, help me understand you. Okay? That's the principle. And, and we do it. Okay? I, we do it because we are made for relationships. Will we necessarily agree on all that was said? No. no. Okay. Do we have to? No. Can we even at times agree to disagree? Yes. Yes. I know you guys would not believe this, but James and I have doctrine we don't agree on, and we both know it. And you know what? We have great respect for each other, and we love each other, and we work together all the time. And we even at times choose not to, talk, to share our doctrine with, with, other, with other people because we know we don't agree and so we're not going to create strife and division. Amen. Amen. Ooh! But what have you learned to do? Set aside your rights. Okay, that's meat, folk. That's meat then we have to choose to exercise it. But by, the, by the way, at, the, at this time, there, there's stuff going on in relationships, and, and so, so it's a good time for us to be teaching about it, right? Yes. Yeah. I didn't start teaching about it because there was problems. <laughs> I, I, I really felt like we needed to do it, and then we've had lots of opportunities We've had lots of opportunities to apply it. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Amen. Because along with it comes the grace. Yeah. And along with it will become maturity, spiritual maturity, because if we respond right to it, we will grow in Christ likeness. And we will get to the point where we don't even have to feel understood, and we are still okay with it. Because you know what? God will fight your battles for you. Yeah. Amen. Now I heard somebody, just a minute, that same person that called me this morning that during the week said, you know what? My wife was talking about um, to him on the phone and she says, um, you know, one of, the ver one of the songs that really helps me at times is, if I hold my peace, he'll fight my battle. Uh -huh. And she says, I've learned there's time for me to be quiet. Yeah. And so you know what he said? He said, so you know what I decided, Roy? I'm going to quit talking. Well, this person is very demonstrative and talkative. And so if he did that, the only reason he'd be quiet is because he's offended. Now, as long as you're offended, you have a problem. They don't have a problem. You do. Is that true? That's true. As long as you're offended, you have a problem. Because God says, forgive others the same way I have forgiven you. More than that, let, let's go a little further. He also said, by the way, Lord's Prayer. He also said, if you don't forgive others their sins, I will not forgive you your sins. About, you know, he, he said it in the Lord's Prayer, then he finished up to make sure we got it. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't forgive others their sins, I won't forgive yours. We're really stuck then, aren't we? Yeah. So, it doesn't matter, per se, what the other person done. What matters is what you do. And by the way, if that's how you feel in your heart, they don't matter. Now you have a problem because you're still bitter. Ooh. 
in my metal. So, basically, care fronting is, if the relationship is broke, is trying to reconcile. The motive is not, listen, a lot of people say, oh, I'll go to them all right, <laughs> and I'll give them a piece of my mind. <laughs> that is not care fronting. Care fronting is going to seek to understand and to reconcile. And it doesn't mean we have to agree on everything. It just means I'm going to choose to love you. I'm going to choose the declaration I made. What we're doing is, is doing this. I will forgive you. I will not speak evil about you. I will uh, I'll be there for you. I will bless you. Wow. Can we love somebody that doesn't love us? Yes. Yeah. What is love? By the way, love is not a feeling. I just want to help you guys. Love is a decision. Amen. I just want you to know it's a decision, and you can decide to love if you want to. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because it's not a feeling. Now, when somebody experiences your love, they might have a feeling, mm -hmm. but you may not have a feeling whatsoever right. because it's a decision. Good teaching, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I can love you whether you love me or not. Because love, you might want to write this down, love is to accept a person for who they are and want what's best for them. Yes. It's that simple. Yeah. And along with love, we won't backbite, we won't criticize, we won't declare their faults, we won't, uh, we won't meditate on all their faults. All their faults, you know. Yeah, all their faults. But, by the way, can, can I... Can I, I'm going to jump in your, in your, pardon? What's that? I, I don't. Can we jump to page two in our booklet? I, I, down at the bottom, it says, where it says choice, number one, is biblical. The key verse says, love thinks no evil. Love thinks no evil. Not too long ago, I was dealing with a situation, and uh, a person was having a real hard time getting past something. And here's the advice I gave them. Stretch exercise to prepare, prepare your heart for care fronting correctly. How many of you have ever been done running or any of them exercises? That if you don't stress, you're likely to get shin splints and all that kind of stuff. So what do you do? Before you start, you stretch them to prepare the muscles for what's coming. Well, here is my recommendation if you're going to go care for somebody. First of all, think of five characteristics, aspects, talents, traits of a person that you appreciate. If you struggle with coming up with at least five, ask a mediator to assist you. Often our pain blinds us to the good. Page two, bottom. Page two bottom, where there's like a cross with a person stretching. Okay? Listen, I know that. You know why? Because that's what I have to do at times. So everything I'm talking to you about, I have to do the same thing. I'm human, I'm flesh and blood and uh, all that. So. You realize we can choose to focus on a person's good things, or we can chose, choose to focus on the bad. Yes. And if they've hurt you, the, the enemy wants to blind you so all you can see the bad. And yet they have plenty of good ones. Mm -hmm. So before you ever go care front and try to seek to understand, you need to deal with your thinking 
and say, yeah, they may have a fault, but look at all the other areas that they're good. Do some stretch exercises, okay? And if you can't, listen, that's okay if you can't. Because if you come to me, I can probably name you a whole bunch of good things about that person. <laughs> because I deliberately think about the good things about you. And I appreciate you for your strength. I know your weaknesses too. And we're going to work on the weaknesses, right? But we're not going to focus on the weaknesses. We're going to work on the weaknesses. A lot of people, they have, find they have one weakness and all they do is focus on taking care of that. And they quit using their strength because they're, they're focusing on their weakness. Why waste your life? Be exact. Maybe if you exercise your good things, that thing would fade out as you use your strengths. So, so may, may I encourage you, if you're ever going to go care for somebody, be sure to, if you've been doing this every day, it'll become a lot easier, by the way. Because... If you notice, I said, I will. In other words, I have set my will to do it. Now, God has to strengthen me and give me help and desire to do it. But I have to set my will. And so I will. That's why you find lots of my wills. Okay? So we can set our will to do it. And then, if you're having a hard time finding good things to find out about them, go get somebody like me and say, can you help me? I, I, I'm just having a hard time seeing past my hurt. Right? I'm having a hard time seeing past my hurt. And just like, just like what I'm going through right now, you know what? I choose to embrace it and say, hey, God, you're at work. You're, you know, I, this isn't comfortable. This isn't easy. I don't have to like it. But you know what? It's not going to destroy me because I'm going to choose to respond the way you tell me to respond. And we're going to get through this thing. And when we do, we're going to be stronger and better Amen. for it. Amen. Now, a lot of people come to church, and I, I'm going to disillusion some of you maybe today. A lot of people come to church thinking there are Christians there. It's going to be a wonderful, glorious place. No, there are former sinners there that are people that God's still at work on. The only difference is we have God to help us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have God to go to and he will speak to us when we're wrong if we'll respond, right? Yeah. And so, so we're, we're, we're just as messed up as the world when we come to Jesus. We came out of the world, right? I came to Jesus because I was messed up. Okay? And you know what? He's still working on me. He's still working on me, and he will the rest of my life. Amen. And you know what? He may use your weaknesses to do it. Yes. Did you ever think you can appreciate somebody because they brought it out? Listen, it can't come out if it isn't there. Yeah. That's right. Sometimes you can be surprised by what you find. Huh? That, whoo, I didn't know that was there. Okay, let me see where I'm at. Um, okay, so care fronting. Care fronting with a person, by the way, on page two, we'll take a look. Did I skip anything? Let's, let me go back to page one. Try to do a review. Okay. For us in the church, Corinthians chapter five, verses 23 and 24, tells us if you're offended by something somebody does by the way I'm doing care fronting is a Bible uh, principle it says to do what if we've been offended by somebody it says there well, we, we can um, 23 and 24 are saying if you're going to go pray Everybody know where I'm at? Okay, Matt, page one. Care fronting a Bible principle. 23 and 24. It's saying, listen, if you're going to go pray or go worship, and while you're going there, you remember what? That somebody has something against you. What are we supposed to do? 
It says, just stop what you're doing, set that aside, go set up an appointment with them, and do what? Seek to understand and work it out. Yes. Blessed are the peacemakers? Yeah. Yes. By the way, there's a difference between peacemakers and peacekeepers. I don't want to go there. Uh, there some people only keep peace. They don't make peace. We make peace by dealing with it and loving and learning to love them. Okay? Because we appreciate who they are. So, let's go on. So, it says... And go be reconciled, and then come and offer your offering, whether it be praise or whether it be, you know, whatever. And in th those days, they would offer an offering to God, a burnt offering. He said, leave it there, go straighten it out. So we have a responsibility that if you know somebody's offended with you, to go with them, to go to them. If they will. By the way, some people won't come. Okay? Because they're afraid that you're really not there to make peace. You're just going to create more pain and more hurt and more all the other stuff. Okay? So, but you have a responsibility to do your part in trying to reconcile. Now, it says in Matthew 18, 15 through 17, if your brother sins against you, now good Christians wouldn't do that, would they? Yeah. <laughs> okay if they sin against you do what go to your go to your friend and say do you know how mean they were to me and your friend will say yeah that was really bad that wasn't fair that you <laughs> there we go we are supposed to go to the person that offended us and no, not talk to them. Help. Seek to understand. That means you're going to zip your lip and say, what you, I, 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 I'd like to talk to you about what happened. And we have a whole way to do it. It's, it's a simple way that's designed to do it, and it's helpful. And once you learn how to do it, it is, becomes actually natural. Okay? To begin with, it feels so awkward. Okay? However... God knows that there's going to be times when somebody refuses to deal with it and work it out. Now, since going to church together and having unforgiveness is not acceptable. Did you hear what I said? Yep. Going to church and carrying offense with somebody in the church is totally unacceptable to God. Amen. It is called sin. So we have a responsibility to go to them and try to work it out. However, there are times that we are struggling so much that we can't do it right. You know, we allow that pain to override us and overwhelm us. And, and, and so it says, listen, if the two of you can't work it out, do what? Go gossip about them and how bad they are and how mean they are and how, is that what it says? It says, get your closest friend to go with you. No. Listen, I, I, since the Bible in the Bible, the principle, if, 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 if the idea is to straighten them out and get them and deal with it like that, you're going to want to take your closest buddy that's been talking nasty about them with you no. to convince them that they are terrible people. And, and so, um, however, I believe I put in here Roy McKinney version. Okay, this is, you can buy the Roy McKinney version Bible here for me. Um, go get an elder or two. That should be unbiased. Yep. Okay? Elders are supposed to be mature Christians mm -hmm. that aren't going to take sides because we understand what we're getting together for. Right. And so we're not going to take anybody's side. It's helping understand each other. 
Elder James came to me this, this week and said, by the way, Roy, uh, I think you need to understand. And told me to talk to somebody. And he encouraged me because he said, they, you need to understand them. And so Elder James came to Elder Roy and helped Elder Roy realize there's a problem that I need to deal with. Okay, that's what we do. By the way, was James, was James trying to hurt me? No. Was James trying to nitpick me? No. What was he doing? Trying to help, you. Trying to help me do what I want to do. Amen. And that is to have right relationships with people. Amen. And, and he realized I didn't understand. And so he came to me and helped me have understanding. And so I responded to it. Amen. By the way, that's what we do for each other. Amen. We aren't nitpicking each other. We aren't trying to find fault with each other. Listen, we're all on the same team. <laughs> okay? We're all on the same team. And so, when James came to me, it's because he loved me, he knows my heart, that I want to have right relationship with everybody. And he said, Roy, here's something that you're probably not aware of, and let me explain something to you. And so he went, listen, if you can't work it out with somebody, don't give up on the relationship, don't give up on them, and say, hey, I'm having a problem understanding them, hearing them, working it out, forgiving, whatever it is, I'm going to get two of the elders to go with me because they're not going to take their side. They're not going to take my side. They're right. going to do their best to help us to understand e each other and have that relationship restored. Amen. Now, if that's not your motive, then you're going to want to bring your yes. best friend, your best ruler on, on your rebellion against God because rebellion against God, not to go, by the way. So, and, and it's rebellion. Listen, it's sin to backbite yes. and gossip. Yes. Listen to me. It is sin to backbite and gossip. And the Bible says, if somebody comes gossiping you, answer them with a strong word of correction. Now, I don't think you have to be mean about it. I give a strong word, say, am I the one that you're supposed to be talking to? Are you here to ask me to help you? By the way, we always assume the best, right? Because one of the next thing on our paper is what? Okay, verse, verse 4, uh, Ephesians 4, 15 says, Speak the truth in... What does that look like? What does that look like? You know, the truth can be used as a sword. I have a friend of mine that is accountable to me, and they said, all I did was speak the truth. I said, however, what's the last part of that verse? In love. In love. Well, I did part of it anyway. <laughs> By the way, we can slay people with the truth. Okay, can I stop right there for a minute? We can slay people with the truth. I'm talking about sinners in our self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. Slay them and treat them as worthless, good-for-nothings. Listen. The truth should be in love. Yeah. Not, I'm better than you, I'm smarter than you, I, I'm, I'm more righteous than you. No. no. The only reason we should say it is to challenge them and build them up and have to, they might have hope and know there's an answer to their hurting, brokenness, yes. and we shouldn't use the word to slay people. Amen. Listen, I hear a lot of Christians do it. Yes. Even, even as much as, even as much as, I, 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 I hate this whole uh, confusion concerning our sexuality. But let me tell you something. I don't hate the people. Right. Amen. Okay. There are people that Satan has beguiled and they've been deceived and he's at work trying to destroy them. We don't need to help the enemy destroy them. We need to help the enemy say there's answers, there's hope, there's forgiveness, there's restoration. There's, yeah, we don't slay people with the truth. Amen. So when we go meet together, we don't slay them with the truth. Um, pardon? Yeah. Okay. So, 
So we are going to use the word, uh, honestly, okay? Um, by the way, how many of you enjoy conflict? I, I, I do not enjoy conflicts. However, they are a real part of life. Yes. Um, what's that? Oh, I see. I know. I, I have, I have a brother. I have a brother that argues what he doesn't even believe just to get people going. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, if we don't deal with our conflicts, I'm on page two. We have one of three choices. We're, we can either go care front, or we can build walls to protect ourselves, which I talked about last time, that you're made for a relationship, you build a wall, people can't get through. Now you have a problem because you need people and yet you won't let people in. So that's really why it's really important to deal with this stuff. Okay, or leave the relationship. You have one of three choices. You're gonna do one of those threes every time. And you gotta decide which one you're gonna do. All right, that was simple. We've already done the bottom of that page. I want to get to this next page, page three. Um, the key thoughts to properly care for with. Understand, listen to me, understand that seldom, can we say seldom? seldom. Let's do it again, seldom. seldom. If ever does a person intentionally set out to hurt you. By the way, I have spent years helping people care for them. I have only had a couple of times when somebody actually just set out. Okay, of course, I'm dealing with the church, so I think the church might be a step above the world. But um, this, that actually set out to hurt somebody, just just mean hearted, you know, it'll happen now and then, but very seldom. Normally, they did not intend to hurt you. Did they hurt you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Did they intend to? No. no. The problem is, we go into it dealing with this, they meant uh -huh. to hurt us. Mm -hmm. right. Rather than say, I am sure you didn't mean anything about it. But I'll tell you, I just, I, I, have, I need to deal with this because I just can't shake it off. And by the way, the more we grow and mature, the easier it is we don't even have to deal with stuff. We, we forgive them right there. We understand them and, 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 and we say, hey, they're in the process just like I'm in the process. And that I don't need any explanation. I, I forgive them right now. I don't even need to go. But you have to be honest with yourself yeah. because you have to know that you can really forgive them. Okay? And if you can, then you don't need to go. But if you do, okay. Here's the, here's the second one is realize that the relationship is more important, I mean, realize the relationship is more important than the issue or being right. Is it? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Let me see where I'm at here. Here we go. I'll probably go ahead and read the bulk of this here. Recently, I've gone through some very difficult, confusing situations. Something occurred, and I tried to figure out what had occurred so I could deal with it properly. Every time I thought I understood what was happening, something else would be revealed, contradicting what I thought happened. I had prayed and asked God to reveal truth, but it seemed like God was silent and refused to reveal the truth. More than that, it seemed that God was actually resisting me. Finally, one morning, God finally spoke to me, saying to me, the thing you are, you think, he spoke to me, you think you are speak, seeking truth, but in reality, you're wanting to be right, oh. not the truth. Oh. Um, 
It was revealed, listen to me, it was revealed that you are making more, imp that it's revealed that you are making more, it, it more important than the relationship. In other words, finding the truth was more important than the relationship. And he said, as a result, You are walking in pride. I, I felt fully in my heart that I was seeking truth, but as God revealed it, I began to realize, oh my goodness, an indication that you are walking in pride is when being right is more important than the relationship. Not cool. I want to read um, from James chapter 4 because that's where God began to speak to me. And I want to go to verses 6 and 7. But he gives more grace. Wherefore, God says, God resists. James chapter 4. I'm sorry. I'm ahead of some of you. James chapter 4. Near the back of your Bible. Hebrews James. James, you find it? You also, James chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. But he gives more grace. We'll talk about that. Wherefore, he said, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. One of the things what I picture when a God says he resists the proud. I picture a football game where the guys are lined up one across from each other. And basically what God's doing to us is saying you ain't going any place. because of your pride. And in my case, I had no idea that I was being prideful. He knew that. I didn't. And he allowed thing after thing after thing until I was desperate enough to hear what he was going to speak so I could respond to it. You know, sometimes he, will, he has to wear us out before we're really ready to hear what he has to say. And in my case, because I believed I was seeking truth, and God knew truth wasn't the issue, it was pride, because the relationship wasn't the most important thing. Did you hear me this morning? It's easy to spot it once God reveals it, when you realize the relationship isn't more important than the issue. It's pride. And when you become prideful, God gets across from you and he says, you ain't going any place. I'm blocking you. Now what you going to do? And why does he block us? Because we can bring so much destruction. He says, people are even more important than the truth. Come on. Say that again. 
people are even more important than the truth. That's how he feels about relationships. And it's pride revealed when we let the relationship be less important than whatever's going on. When we're careful on things, you need to remember that. Caring about the relationship and that person is what is really important. Not being right, not being understood, but loving and understanding that person and caring about that person. That's what's important. And when we get it twisted, he loves us enough, what will he do? He said, I will oppose you. He said, I oppose what? The prideful. And he will oppose you. And you can wear yourself out. You'll feel tired inside. You'll be weary. You'll, you'll feel like ever, nothing can go right and all that. And all it's doing is God's opposing you saying, listen, you got your powers out of line. Listen, relationship is more important than anything else. And you need to act that way. That this person, no matter what they did to you, no matter what they said to you, no matter what happened, you having a right relationship with them is more important than all that mess. Yeah. And even if you never, quote unquote, have a relationship with them, how you feel about them is what really matters. That you genuinely let God love them through you. And that's the only way you're going to fulfill the I wills. When you realize God cares about relationships. Yeah. Well, I guess we got almost as far as we did last week. Last week. <laughs> you, you probably won't hear from Mike for about three months. Pardon? <laughs> yeah, most all times it is. No, uh, listen. That's why you need to read this paper on a daily basis. Listen. Read, read what it says. Satan is the enemy, not the person. We need to remember that. But we need to review it day in, day out. So you spot it when you realize you're seeing the person as the enemy and don't realize it's just Satan trying to come rob, kill, and destroy. It's all it is. Satan coming in, trying to rob, kill, and destroy. Yeah. Well, we got, we got, I hope we got some place this morning to challenge us and to grow in understanding how to have quality relationships. Amen? Yeah. And, and even my bad example is a good example. Right? Because we can grow. We're going to grow in our bad things if we will deal with them right. So growth going to happen. My thing is, I'm going to grow. I, I don't care what anybody else chooses not to do. I'm going to grow. And, and, and just like when God sends a James along, I'm going to embrace it, I'm going to hear it, I'm going to act on it, and let God deal with me. And, and it's important we all do. Amen? Amen. Awesome. All right, well, God, we thank you for truth. We thank you for your word. And uh, we just humble ourselves before you today. And uh, we just ask you to help us to learn the priorities in your heart and in your word. And relationship is at the top of the list. And will you help us, God, to, to, to humble ourselves? Will you help us to seek to understand? Will you help us to love? Uh, God, we can't do that without your help. And so we just invite you to be Lord of our life. Lead, guide, and direct us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.